Well, thank you for uh, tuning in to Buy Local TV, and today we've got the guys from Talking Scuba back. And in the last episode, we, we talked a little bit about what the video podcast idea and some of the things that, that, that Johnny was doing. And, you know, this time we're going to turn it over and we're going to talk a little bit to Bob this time. Bob, how long have you been diving? Uh, since 2001, 2002, something like that. Okay. And have you dived mainly in Michigan or have you done things around the world? Uh, I've done a little bit of travel diving, but what I'm really passionate about is our diving here in Michigan. Um, we have such a great opportunity to dive in incredible shipwrecks that are in, in better shape than any shipwrecks in the world. Um, the freshwater we have here, just, just the shipwrecks don't deteriorate. Um, now that we have the zebra mussels in the lake, the visibility you know, back in even the early 90s um, was probably you know, on average, especially in the southern parts of the lakes, um, maybe 20 or 30 feet. Now we're getting visibilities of 70 feet, 100 feet plus. Um, and, and that rivals anything you'd see in the Caribbean or, or the Red Sea or any, anywhere in the world. So we're really fortunate to have, um, you know, to live this close to some, some really amazing shipwrecks. And, you know, over the next couple of years, um, hopefully we'll start getting more tourism back and uh, supporting these uh, local dive shops we have here and also a lot of the, the charter businesses and stuff that are going out on the lake and diving these cool shipwrecks. So one could, there's, you know, you say talk about the dive shops, one can get in and do lessons. Sure. There's a lot of different places around that they could get, do some lessons. And then from there, slowly but surely get into the different types of dives. And, you know, Johnny, I know that you haven't been diving for as long. Right. Um, I remember way back when you and I were up into uh, Canada and we were doing some snorkeling. Yeah. You know, uh, but, you know, you had a passion back then for it. Um, but what got you kind of involved with wanting to take it to the next level? Well, we were doing some research trying to figure out, you know, who's making some decent content out there. And at the time when we were doing our product, trying to figure out our productions, there just was really either the podcast that was in production was done, or if it was in production, the quality was just horrible. So we were like, let's make a show that we want to watch, that we enjoy. And I'm, we're, and I'm assuming that other people would enjoy it too. So that's what we kind of did. So it's, it's one of these, as we talked about in the last episode, you kind of evolve with it. Right. Now, really quick in this episode, and we'll talk about it further in, in, in upcoming episodes, what is, Bob, what's your most favorite place to dive in Michigan and why? Sure. One of my favorite places is the Straits of Mackinac. Okay. Um, there's incredible shipwrecks up there. Um, there. There's still a lot of shipwrecks to be found in the Straits area, mm-hmm. and, um, but the visibility is, is usually 70, 80 foot. Um, you know, you can get days where it's not as good, but usually it's, it's that high. You've got shipwrecks um, from the Cedarville. That's an, it's a, uh, a self-unloading um, uh, ship. Uh, made of steel and then you have um, you know the old wooden shipwrecks um, that are just in really incredible shape so you know there's a, a myriad of different types of shipwrecks that you can dive up there plus the location of it you can get to either side of of uh, either in Lake Michigan or Lake Huron so if the weather's you know coming from the east or the west you can always duck it and, and you don't have to waste days so I really enjoy diving. So a little planning yes so all, always absolutely. always plan your dive and, you know, we're going to talk to these guys some more in, uh, in upcoming episodes. And, but for right now, Frank, I'm going to turn it back to you. Thanks, Dwayne. There's a lot of wonderful people in business around the state of Michigan, from Harrison, Clare, Mount Pleasant, Stanwood, Big Rapids, and Howard City. Let's meet a few of these great people and their businesses. Hi, I'm Catherine Wildermuth. General Manager of the Country Inn and Suites Hotel here in Big Rapids, Michigan, right next door to the Meyer Store. We are part of the Carlson Worldwide Hospitality International brand of hotels. The amenities here at the property are absolutely wonderful. Uh, I guess one of the most popular is the complimentary um, breakfast buffet. There's coffee, tea, and cocoa available 24 hours a day, as well as fresh baked cookies at the front desk. We have indoor pool and spa. We have a very nice little fitness room. We have uh, 63 rooms total with a variety of room types. We also have a variety of suite accommodations. I'm Laura Yunker of Absolute Granite on West Pickard Street in Mount Pleasant, inviting you to visit our beautiful showroom. To 
Together with our design professionals, we'll create the kitchen you have dreamed about. Discover the natural beauty and elegance that Absolute Granite can bring to your home. Hi there, I'm Don Walteski. I'm the owner here at Quality Car and Truck Repair. We've been in business since 1989. We're located at 14905 220th Avenue in Big Rapids. We're just over the expressway from Lowe's and Myers. Was employed with the county as a maintenance supervisor mechanic for the transit service. I saw a need for a professional automotive repair shop during that time, and that's when I left the county and started this business in 1989. We have all the latest high-tech equipment and the most specialized training of any shop around to be able to service today's cars trucks and motorhomes in fact, where I service ambulances and other specialized emergency type vehicles and have built a good reputation doing Hi, so. Hi, my name is Joe Benchley. I'm the owner of Benchley's Amish Furniture in Clare, Michigan. My wife and I started uh, Benchley's Amish Furniture in 1989 out of the basement of our home. Within a few years we actually moved over to our new address at 9425 Tobacco Drive and that's where we've been ever since. What makes Benchley's Amish Furniture unique and worth the drive is we, we offer the largest selection of Amish built furniture in Michigan. We have over 22,000 square foot showroom with Amish furniture on display. As being the owner of the store that you'll actually see me out on the floor doing the stuff, working with customers, helping customers load the furniture. You know at Benchley's Amish Furniture I've been saying it for years. We're a little out of the way but worth it. My name is Jim Ranke. I'm a co-owner of Ranke's Hearth of the Home Fireplace Shop. Uh, our address is 234 East Pine Street in Harrison, and we're just south of National City Bank. Hello, I'm Mark Ranke, co-owner of Ranke's Fireplace Shop. My background uh, goes back to uh, very early days of our, our family construction business in the late uh, 70s that we decided that there was a, a need for alternative energy. We have an extensive product line and we are hands-on installers and masons also. And my father decided to uh, uh, bring in a fireplace line. Well every day is a, seems to be a challenge. Uh, every, every house has a different fireplace or stove project and no two are the same. My name is Sue and my husband and I own the Outback Lodge here in Stanwood, Michigan. My husband and I had always wanted to own a bed and breakfast, so when our four kids went off to do their own thing, we decided to open a bed and breakfast, and it's worked out great. Our lodge has six rooms, and we offer a full, big, hearty breakfast. The upper level has one bed in each room, a jacuzzi in one of the rooms, and then they all have private bathrooms. Some of the rooms, the ones on the lower level, all have two or three beds in them so that you can sleep a lot of people here at the lodge, but yet each person has their own privacy as well. We cater to both families and uh, couples, all kinds of groups that can stay here. In addition to the horseback riding, pony rides, wagon rides, sleigh rides right here on the ranch, there are also 2,200 acres of timberland right behind the ranch that people can hike in or they can ride their bikes. There are lots of golf courses in the area, very, very nice, beautiful courses. Uh, and a lot of hunters come here as well. There is lots of opportunity for water sports. We also allow our guests to help with the chores if they want to with the horses that are both boarded here and that are used for the riding stables and therapeutic riding. My name is Dave Saucier. I am one of the groomer operators, a member also of the Pierre Marquette Snowmobile Club. The club is in existence to promote snowmobiling here in the state of Michigan. The White Pine Trail is one of the biggest uh, rails to trails here in the state. It is uh, several miles that we groom. We groom all the way from Russell Road near Cedar Springs all the way up to Leroy and then we groom from Reed City all the way over to Fargo. Wow, there really is a lot of wonderful people around the state of Michigan, and we are looking forward to going out and meeting more of you as we move around this great state. And today, I'm in Cedar Springs. I'm at, I'm at Frank's studio, and we're going to do a continuation of our last episode's tech tip where we took out some scratches using Photoshop. Today, we're going to look at more of the stains some uh, that might occur in some old photographs. And I'm going to get out of Frank's chair so he can go to work. And Frank, let's take some stains out of an old photograph now.
Oh, I am Frank. In our last episode, I showed you a few techniques on how to remove some scratches from your old photos in Photoshop. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to remove some stains and discolorations that may have occurred due to aging. One of the easiest things you can do to get rid of discoloration in an old photo is to desaturate your photo. We can do that by simply going up to Image, Adjustments, Desaturate. Now for stains, there are a few techniques. In this photo, our stains are on the edges and appear to have been caused by tape. In this situation, there is an easy and quick fix. Let me show you what I mean. First, let's make a duplicate layer of this photo. Then double click on that layer to bring up your layer style box. And then let's apply a stroke and then click on stroke to go into its settings. Now let's change the position from outside to inside and then let's adjust that size until you cover up all the tape marks or stains. Then you'll also want to change the color of the border or your stroke rather. In this photo white would be the most appropriate and then click OK. And that right there got rid of all our stains on the edges. Now if you have stains that are on the actual photo Check back on our Buy Local TV episode 55 where I show some techniques on removing scratches. These same techniques can be used to remove stains. With some detailed work and a lot of patience, you can completely restore a photo. Here's a before and an after of this photo that I've been showing you. Everyone has those old photos that unfortunately may have been damaged over time. Let us help you preserve those precious memories. Contact us and we will be happy to help you. That concludes this week's Tech Tip. I am Frank, and thanks for tuning in. In this segment, we're at the Croton Dam. Uh, the water is pretty calm here on the river right now, but uh, back in the day, uh, Dwayne, you were telling me earlier about a story about when it wasn't so calm. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, back in 1986, a lot of people will remember the flood of 86. And at that time, you know, this river was not calm and all the dams were just overflowing. So I did a histor historical video on Macosta County and I got to travel to some of the dams. Let's take a look at that segment right now. I remember grabbing my camera one day and just heading around the county and just documenting some of the flood damage. I was down in Roger Sites at the dam when a member from Consumers Power came up to me and asked me if I would uh, document each one of the dams. So I went around and did that. And I remember Hardy was probably the scariest. Uh, I remember walking down through it and it just kind of groaned and creaked and made all sorts of noises that were, were pretty scary. And I remember being at the bottom of that and, and just watching all that water come out. It was kind of cool, I thought it was. But then the worker that I was with tapped me on the shoulder and said, I think it's time we get the hell out of here. And you know, at that point, I guess reality kind of set in and it dawned on me just how scary this actually could have been. But that was my uh, experience of the flood. Wow, Dwayne, that was a lot of water back in 86. Good thing you didn't get swept away, but anything for that great shot. Anyway, from water to ice, let's take it up to St. Ignis, where Dwayne had an interview with a very famous Red Wing alumni member. Let's take a look. Tell me a little bit about your career and, and, and some of your fondest memories of hockey. Well, my career was just playing the greatest game in the world and a game that I still love as much as I ever did. But the only trouble is, as you get older, you can't play it anymore. <laughs> but it's, it's been a wonderful thing for me. And the state of Michigan has been a great state for me. One, the wonderful thing about hockey, you're on a team. I don't care if you're 12 years of age, or you're 22 years of age, or you're 40 years of age. When you get on a team, when it's not the greatest hockey player that will score a goal. You can be the left winger or right winger, and as long as you touch that puck when you go down the ice, and you make a pass to a guy who's a good player, he scores a goal, it picks you up. Most sports, all the kids sit on the bench most of the time. Football, you got certain players, the coaches play them till they're dead, you know? And it's the same with basketball. If you're six foot eight, you're gonna play basketball. If you're five foot eight, you're not gonna play basketball. You know, baseball, same, it's tough. But in hockey, 
You go up and down the ice, and no matter whether you lack talent or not, you're going to get a chance to touch that puck. And you, you contribute to the help of your team to win a game, tie a game, or even in losing, play a good game. You know, so that's the beautiful thing about hockey. Well, and I appreciate your time very my, much. My pleasure. Thank you. We have a new segment on By Local TV called Where Am I? At this particular location, I need to know the name of the park and the city that I'm in. And the winner of this week's Where Am I? will get a free video to DVD transfer. So if you've got any VHS tapes out there that need to be transferred to uh, DVD, we'll do one up to two hours in length, and you'll get it free. So call us at 231-937-5420, or send an email, and we'll draw from the correct answers, and we'll let you know on the next episode of Buy Local TV. Thanks for playing. Well, we're here at a, uh, at a Breathe concert, which was a community worship service down here in Cedar Springs. And Frank, we just got done doing the show. The crowd's still sticking around. It was a wild time. I mean, we had a, a lot of fun. You could just feel the Lord in the presence. And it was, it was a lot of, it was just a good time. And, and this was your first directing job. So tell us, how did it go? <laughs> it went great. You know, I'm used to being behind a camera or doing editing, but this was a, a fun experience. And we had a great crew. I'm very thankful. Uh, to work with such a great team. Uh, everyone uh, did their job well, and uh, the concert went really well, and I was very pleased. And just to come out and worship the Lord and, and you know, being in a concert like, you know, like this was just really awesome. And it was, and, and you know, for those of you out there that, that have an event or something going on, you know, here at Buy Local TV, we have the resources to bring a crew together to do a multi-camera production, whether it's for DVD or whether it's for live showing. You know, you could just give us a call. We'd be happy to come out. And as you said, this was just a great event and a wonderful time. It sure was. We'll do it again sometime. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Buy Local TV, where we're promoting Michigan businesses, communities, and its people. We'd also like to take this opportunity to thank Jack Roberts from Peak Positions up in Traverse City. They are your SEO experts. So if you want your website to be found, you need to give Jack a call today. That's right, Dwayne. And in our next episode of Buy Local TV, we're going to go fishing, and we're going to take you around our great state of Michigan. So until next time. Don't forget, check us out on Buy Local TV where we're promoting Michigan businesses, communities, and its people. Hello, and on this segment, we're uh, here at the Crody Dam and uh, Crody Dam. Crody. 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 <laughs> Thanks for the That's a blooper for you. Yeah, we got a blooper. Okay. Job well, and uh, the concert went really well, and I was very pleased. And just to come out and worship the Lord and... and really you know, great things. And each episode each week, a continuation on an episode that we did uh, in our last episode. Hello, and on this segment, we're uh, here at the Crody Dam and uh, Croton Dam. Crody. Thanks for the. That's a blooper for you. Yeah, we got a blooper. Okay. Job well, and uh, the concert went really well, and I was very pleased. And just to come out and worship the Lord and and really you know. great things. And each episode, each week, a continuation on an episode that we did uh, in our last episode.